Welcome to Wish All Old on this, the second of our harvest services. Whether you're watching online or whether you're here in person, you're all very, very welcome. Our call to worship this morning is from Genesis chapter 8, reading from verse 22. As long as the world exists, there will be a time for planting and a time for harvest. There will always be cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night. Let us join in worshipping God as we sing our first hymn of praise, hymn, fi hymn 535, Who Would True Valour See? Walk with us 
and companionship is needed. Find us rest at the points of exhaustion. And may your holy word live within us, giving us an example of Christ-like compassion to those ill at ease, to the downtrodden, to those seeking a lasting sense of peace. And in this act of worship, Lord, allow us to let go of all that blocks us and that keeps us chained to our addictions and weaknesses. Grant us, Lord, the knowledge to advise, to be respectful of difference, when it disunites us. Lord, we pray now and ask for your blessing upon our community of faith. May we be faithful servants of Jesus as we share together in the words of the Lord's Prayer of Savior. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. How many of you have a dog? Well, I would imagine there's, there's quite a lot of people. We're a very dog-loving nation here in Britain. And I want to tell you this morning a, a lovely parable about the dog's nature. But it's, it's really about our nature and the way that, that we all react to things. So I know it's about a dog, but it's really, it's really about how we, how we act to things. One day, there was a dog passing a butcher's shop. And inside, in the butcher's window, just inside the door, was an enormous, juicy bone. The most, oh, gorgeous thing that a dog would ever wish for. Just looking at it made the dog's mouth water. Dogs drill a lot, you know. Well, as soon as the dog saw that the butcher's back was turned, the dog crept into the shop, leapt up, and from the counter grabbed the bone. Off he ran. The butcher was too slow to get round the counter and run out the shop. The dog was already halfway down, down the street. Carrying this big bone in its mouth, it kind of waddled from side to side. It was a, a small town, so the dog decided I better hide this bone because he wanted to find a, a peaceful spot just outside the town where he could enjoy the bone without being disturbed at all. Soon the dog came to a river. He trotted along the bank of the riverside and he happened to look down. To his surprise he saw another dog with an even bigger bone. That bone looks even tastier than mine, thought the dog. A bit of a greedy dog, wasn't he? Why shouldn't I have the bigger bone? I can take that dog. I know, I'll jump into the river and grab it from that dog's mouth. And so the dog jumped. A great leap and a great splash. Through the water, he could find neither the dog nor the bone. And his own bone, well, of course, we all know what happened to that. It fell out his mouth and sank to the bottom. As the dog climbed back to the river bank, it shook itself and shook all the water off. He looked back into the water. There was that dog again. This time we saw a very wet and bedraggled, sad-looking dog. Did the dog realise that he was looking at his own reflection? Did the dog realise that if he hadn't been so greedy, he'd have still had that stolen bone, not that we're in favour of stealing bones? 
still had that big, lovely, juicy bone. Thought the dog. Well, I'm sure all of us can relate to that story. That that's just a natural human condition. We all desire something that we can't have. We all desire something that's better than what we've got. We all think that the big juicy bone is better than the one that we have. It's a very salient lesson to learn, isn't it? And God teaches us that lesson each and every day. In the parables of Jesus, we hear that, look at the, the birds in the air. They are contented, flying around. For the Lord has counted the hairs on our head. Well, as you can see from mine, there's not many left. But what the parable means is that the Lord cared for us. We shouldn't desire all these things of life. We live in a world that breeds desire, and desire is part of human nature. But it's our task to have the right desire. Amen, and may God bless to us his holy word. Our old age hymn today is a very old one, and one that's a favourite from, from Harvest. It comes out of CH3, and it's God Who Made the Earth. Today's reading is taken from Galatians chapter 6 verses 1 to 10. My friends, if someone is caught in any kind of wrongdoing, those of you who are spiritual should set him right. But you must do it in a gentle way and keep an eye on yourselves so that you will not be tempted to. Help carry one another's burdens and in this way you will obey the Lord of Christ. If you think you are something when you really are nothing, you are only deceiving yourself. You should each judge your own conduct. If it is good, then you can be proud of what you have done without having to compare it with what someone else has done. For each of you have to carry your own load. If you are being taught the Christian message, you should share all the good things that you with they have with your teacher. Do not deceive yourself. No one makes a fool of God. You will reap exactly what you plant. If you plant in the field of your natural desires, from it you will gather the harvest of death. If you plant in the field of the Spirit, from the Spirit you will gather the harvest of eternal life. So let us not become tired of doing good, for if we do not give up, the time will come when we will reap the harvest. So then, as often as we have the chance, we should do good to everyone, 
and especially to those who belong to our family in the faith. Amen and thanks be to God. Our third term this morning is number 210, Awake My Soul. church should harvest. We look at the book of Leviticus. This week we want to expand the theme to what will the church harvest and we're going to, to look at a passage from Galatians chapter 6. Historically passages like Galatians 6 were backed up by a very straightforward belief that if you do good you go to heaven and if you do bad you go to hell. Verse 8 says of Galatians 6 If you plant in the field of natural desires, from it you will gather the harvest of death. And then in verse 9 it says If you plant in the field of the Spirit, from the Spirit you will gather the harvest of eternal life. It was a very simple and straightforward view of the world that would resonate with many today. However, along came the reformers 400 years ago plus, Martin Luther and John Calvin, and they challenged this to state that justification is by faith alone, completely apart from good works or bad works. So the Bible states, and it's from the book of Romans, that we are not justified by good works alone, but by faith and by grace. So why did they challenge this apparently very easy maxim about good works and good deeds with something more complex? Paul in Galatians 6 is, is writing to a church that has tensions and struggles of faith. And you could almost argue that that would be a church of, of any historical era. In other words, it's asking the church the very real question, what is its purpose? And 
And Galatians 6 has a very strong theme and a very clear purpose to the Christian church. It was a, a, a church of new converts, a church of Pharisees, a church of, of Jewish converts and of Gentiles. And yet the message, the hardest message, and the Christian message in Galatians 6 is very clear. It is goodness. Let everyone do good to everyone. Even in this passage calls it the law of Christ. In other words, the fulfilment of the law of Moses that we looked at last week in Leviticus. And he urges all his listeners to, to share in this, whether they came from a, a Jewish background or a gentle background or they were former Pharisees, or they came from a, a multiplicity of different ethnic backgrounds. The Christian message was simple. It's about goodness. And so Paul begins by reflecting that the ministry of this new covenant, this new relationship, and he knows our human nature. Just as the silly story of the dog and the bone, human nature being what it is, it'll backslide. It was inevitable that things would go wrong. And whether it's the Galatian church that Paul is writing to, whether it's a, the church of the centuries, or whether it's our church today, do you agree with that or not agree with that? Well, do we ever say the wrong thing? Even unintentionally? Well, of course we do. Do we ever think of the consequences before we speak? Of course we do. Do we let weariness shape our decisions? Well, of course we do. Do we ignore certain people and fawn after others? Of course we do. Is it our own self-interest that we act, just like the silly story of the dog and the bone? Is that at the forefront in how we decide how to act and what to say? That's what Paul is lumps all these things together. And so he says in this chapter in Galatians, he says, pull them all together. It's our natural desires. In the King James Version it uses... It's of the flesh. In the message version of the Bible, it's uses it's selfishness. It's not that Paul doesn't want us to do good. Of course he wants us to do good. But it's about the motivation of why we do good. Does the motivation come from our own ego? Or does it come from God? Is it from self? Or is it from our creator? Many a person has done much good. The world's billionaires do lots of good with hundreds of millions of pounds and dollars. And the world admires their philanthropy. Did you know that in 2018, there was 2,200 billionaires, that's dollar billionaires, and the top eight, they own nearly half the world's wealth. And many give lots and lots away. But what's their motivation? I don't want to dwell on this rascal too much, but if I mention the name Jimmy Savile, there's endless photographs of him doing good, running marathons, working in a hospital, gaining favour of politicians. There's even photographs of him with royalty. The adulation of the crowds for his good works. And yet we know he was evil through and through. And so the harvest of goodness, the law of Christ, should be the fulfilment and mission of the church in Galatia. And yet we know that through the historical ages, power and riches have corrupted the church. I could have shown many different photographs of that wasn't perfect then, and it's not perfect now. And so therefore Paul wants us to be reminded, and here's what it says in verse 9. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. 
And he sees the essence of Christianity that we will not give up and that we'll do good in the right way by the presence of the Holy Spirit. There can be many good people in the world, but if the Holy Spirit isn't part of the equation, then he thinks that people will tire and people will not remain good. Have you ever heard of the expression compassion fatigue? Day after day in our post boxes we get good causes. Our world is continually in crisis, no matter what historical era it is, whether it's in Syria or Yemen or Afghanistan, they are all worthy. They're all desiring of us to do good. And, and Paul knew that the world would change overnight. Change only happens when goodness is present, is what he believed. At the beginning of this passage, somebody in the church has done something wrong. And so therefore, he invites this individual church, just as he invites us to share in the burdens and to fulfil the law of Christ. We know that the world continues to, to spin round, spin round the sun. It spins round periods of calm and clamour, periods of peace and periods of war, periods of upheaval, periods of building. If history teaches us anything, it's that human nature doesn't change. But humans can change and act in goodness and in love. And that's really the message today from Galatians. That's really the message of the harvest. You know the expression, we will reap what we sow. It tells us in this passage that we'll not make a fool of God. God knows what's in our heart. God knows what we do. And the harvest, it says, is one that will lead to a greater spiritual life. Leading to a reaping of the harvest, which gives us an energy, it says, to constantly produce. To doing good at every opportunity. Next Sunday here in our church is our Harvest Festival, and we're all looking forward to that. So I'm inviting us today to look forward to make it the Harvest Festival that most fulfills the history of this church. Let us renew our energy on that Sunday, let us be filled by the Spirit, and let us above all be filled by that message of what sort of harvest do we want? One of goodness, of generosity, and then we will reap what we sow. Amen. May God bless to us his holy word. Thank you for the wonders of your creation, for the beauty of the vivid sunsets and the changing colours of the leaves on the trees and for the, for the plentiful supply of food that is brought in by the harvest. We know, Lord, that there are many in this community, country and across the world who are starving. We pray, Lord, that those who are starving are fed and for those tasked to aid them. Many people across the world are thirsty through drought or unclean water. Be with them, Lord, and may the countries with plenty to give help those with little and encourage us to give.
to the charities who work with them. Be with the people of the world affected by war or terrorism. Lord, we ask you to bless the people of Afghanistan, many of whom are facing uncertainty following the re-emergence of the Taliban. May you grant those in government, both those in Holyrood and in Westminster, the wisdom to make decisions for the good of this country. We ask your blessing on the royal family and in particular Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. Bless all the key workers both in the NHS and elsewhere as they continue to work hard in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray to you, O God, for our church, for our minister Keith, for his fruitful ministry, for our kirk session and office bearers, for the sometimes difficult decisions they must make and the hard work that they put in over the years. We also ask you to bless our congregation, our organisations, the people who work hard to bring our church into the local community, for the members of the Saturday Club who provide tea, food and fellowship, the men's club, the leaders of the children of the Sunday school, and to the officers and boys from our Boys Brigade Company. In our own community, Lord, we ask that you remain with the people of Wisha, for the unemployed, those struggling with addiction, those in pain and suffering from illness, and for the bereaved. May you wrap your loving arms around them. In a short period of silence, we ask you to give your blessing to all those who we name in our hearts. Hear our prayers, we ask, O Lord, in Jesus' name, who brought healing, teaching, and your light and loving presence to the lives of many. Amen. And now our offering shall be received. Closing song today is hymn 159, Lord for the Years, and we sing verses 1 to 4.
kitchen every day. And we ask for the blessing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.